For Antarctica, where polar explorer Ernest Shackleton planned to cross on foot the last uncharted continent, the Endurance set sail from England in August 1914. In January 1915, after battling its way for six weeks through a thousand miles of pack ice and not only a day's sail short of its destination, the Endurance became locked in an island of ice. For 10 months, the ice marooned endurance drifted northwest before it was finally crushed, but for Shackleton and his crew of 27 men, the ordeal had barely begun. It would end only after a near miraculous journey by Shackleton and a skeleton crew through over 850 miles of the South Atlant Atlantic's heaviest seas to the closest outpost of civilization. This astonishing tale of survival by Shackleton and all of 27 of his men for over a year on the ice-bound Antarctic seas, as Time Magazine puts it, defined heroism. Alfred Lansing's brilliantly narrated book has long been acknowledged as the definitive account of the Endurance's fateful trip. Now, as, as, as you clearly read, uh, heard me say from telling the, what this book is about, it is a miraculous story of survival and heroism. Uh, the Endurance, as, as again, as you heard from there, shipwrecked in Antarctica, and they spent over, over a year uh, isolated from civilization, trying to find their way back to it with very little food, supplies, and whatnot, and probably even willpower to get there. I threw, I actually, I did like this book. Um, it is well written. It actually has, um, it was actually um, a com the author of this book took a combination of different source materials from the actual diaries of the of the of the crew of the uh, endurance through from actual because I think some of the people were still alive when he wrote this book so he actually interviewed them or um, sorry I'm trying to do a quick look at the acknowledgement he went to different museums and different and just different found many different sources through through anything because Shackleton's uh, journey is very well, you know, known as legendary. So it, he had a lot to work with, and he brilliantly put it all together in this book. It's very well narrated. Um, he, he he probably did fluff up maybe a thing or two because he only qu quotes the diaries. He doesn't put excerpts of diary for every page. He just basically he read the diaries and then just basically told the story and then just every once in a while when he wanted uh, to tell somebody's point of view he would quote the diary but he would just narrate it like it's a regular novel so maybe he fluffed up maybe one or two things but I can't be sure myself because I haven't read the diaries myself so but other than that it, like I said it's well written it's it's a good read uh, my only problem is that it is it drags it is just it's just a slow book to read but it is worth it to the end because some of the things they go through is very interesting and very sad. Like at one point, you know, there's these sea. They 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 have their dogs. They have dogs for to uh, for their sleds to get across the ice and do this and that. And at one point, they they realized they had to kill the dogs, and it was a very very sad moment. Um, uh, there are there's other other moments of just like near misses you know they could have died around every corner but somehow they kept it together it's so surprising how well each member kept it together and how the captain shackleton tried his very best to just keep morale up you know he didn't try to do anything you would see in any movie or something where he would uh try to you know keep everything for himself or he was the bad guy or anybody was the bad guy no everybody was on equal terms Yes, he was the captain, but he 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 treated everybody as an equal and tried to keep their morale up. He knew his men, and when he knew that you know sometimes you had to give them a break, like he would he would give them extra meals or something. You know, he had, it was just he would just do something. It was it was very cool. Um, the, other than that, not much could be really said. You have to really read this book to kind of understand it and understand what I'm talking about. It is a good read. It just drags. Uh, it's very slow to read, which is why it took me so long to read, because it was just so slow. And and 
um, and it's just it's just very it's just a very interesting tale. But I did like this one. I do recommend it, particularly if you're a historian of navy or sea travels or something like that, or you just like uh, uh, you just like kind of, I wouldn't say pirate stories, but explorers or um, again naval stuff, or you just like history and about certain time periods and this and that. It is very interesting how like how they tell about how they decide how they uh using a sextant how they figured out where they were especially since you know they had to travel by sea majority of the time and those were some of the most painful scenes actually with them traveling by sea not not for us reader but for them because they had to go through so many storms and the the makeshift boats that they had just kept on getting wet and them getting wet oh it was just painful um, but it was pretty interesting how somebody, you know, would take out a sextant. It's like, oh, how close are we to this island? To this island, we need to get to, and you just take a sextant, look at the stars or the sun, and say, oh, we're at this point. We made in eight hours. We made five miles. <laughs> it was just like, oh my god, it's so painful the slow distance they made. But it was it was pretty cool. All these little details and stuff. How they kept their journal entries and. Um, what they used to make you know little huts because at one point because they over time they had to separate themselves you know that when they get to one island they realized they couldn't take as many people with them to go to find help so they had to leave some people behind and he, the author would tell the point of view of the people left behind and how they survived you know how they made food how they made their 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 home and kept everybody warm and this uh, so it was pretty cool it, it's a lot of interesting details i'd have to give this book a basic great three stars out of, out of five you know it kept you entertained it had some good notes and uh it had a lot of good narration and um and yes it dragged but it, it, it was a good read and i thoroughly enjoyed it um this was actually my dad's book he gave it to me he thought i'd enjoy it and i did it is a good book he liked it he's heard about it for years so it's just unfortunate that unfortunately because a couple months ago my dad died and I, I I always wanted to talk to him about this book after I finished reading it. I did talk to him periodically about certain things I've read and we talk about it and stuff. It was pretty good but I would have liked to have talked more about it with him after finishing the book and get picking up details that he picked up and this and that. But oh well, that's, that's the sad thing about this book. And, um, and uh, sorry to depress you with that but that's just it's one that's that's just something I gotta bring out because I just wanted to kind of explain why it's been a while since I've made a review because it's just that and a bunch of other personal matters kept coming up that just got in the way of making reviews and uh, yeah it's been a sad time but I thought I'd make this review in honor of him um, and thank him for everything that he's done and thank you for this book and I have several actually more of his books that I that he had that I would like to read so soon in the future. Uh, so thank you for watching this video and uh, have a nice day.